everybody. Welcome to day two of my little ISPO journalistic tour where I take you through some of the stuff that is new, that is innovative and that you might want to buy next season. So, uh, like yesterday, I'm going to keep this brief so that we don't spend like hours because you know we could spend hours uh, glooming and uh, rooming about all this stuff. Uh, as usual, uh, I will be going through a few pieces of gear and uh, at the end I will also go through a piece of gear that I use and I have here and you might also find on the ISPO stands. So, as you, some of you who follow this, uh, the ISPO every year and every, uh, every year uh, awards certain products, uh, the gold, silver uh, and bronze awards as well as the innovation awards and the sustainability awards. The award ceremony was yesterday, you could watch it live on the ISPO public stream, which is also running concurrently now. Uh, today's athlete, I think, is a young BMX racer from Berlin. Uh, but for us, since we are more of a winter crowd, we are going today to check out a few more winter brands. And of these, we're going to check out uh, a few ISPO gold medal winners. This is going to be early bird skis from Hanno Schwab, a friend of mine who I met two years ago in Innsbruck, randomly cruising with a few buddies. Uh, he opened up, a, opened up a sustainable ski company, more on that later. Uh, then we're going to check out Kali Hansen's new Odin jacket range, which is made of a special new material that is extremely durable and is also very sustainable. You know, they make jackets for all these on Arctic expeditions and rig work and stuff like that. Uh, people who know me know that I, I myself like to, if it's possible, buy gear that is meant for rescue work, like this Torino OP50 backpack, because, well, you could lift it up with a helicopter and me on it. So. The durability of the materials is a little better than the normal stuff you buy for production, at least usually if it has some list on it or something like that. But then we will be talking about uh, new materials, uh, specifically a Farino jacket made of a new um, of a new Polar Tech material, and we'll check out the new Elan Voyager skis, which I was actually very keen on finding out what they are because I didn't exactly know that they would actually commercialize this idea. And at the end, I'm going to uh, talk also about a special trend I've noticed in AT bind, um, Alpine bind, uh, AT bindings, technical bindings. And uh, well, let's get into it. Okay, so we're back in gamer streaming mode, back at the ISPO page from yesterday on the launch page. As you can see, we have the live stream of day two going on. Let's check it out. I think it's going to run for another hour. They have a lot of interesting topics. Uh, this was the thing that was running earlier about a young BMX racer. But for us, more interesting was the stuff that we wanted to check out in gear. Now in the showrooms we can discover a lot of different products and specifically I'm going to go through a few again, starting first with the Odin jacket from Holly Hansen. Oh wait, it threw me out. Let's log in again. Okay, we're back. So we said we're going to start with the jacket from Harley Hansen, the Odin range, which captured my attention. It was uh, basically, um, some of you know, I really like to dabble in different materials and I started looking at different jackets. And then I noticed the uh, Harley Hansen Infinity Insulated jacket, which got a sustainability award and is also a ISPO Award Gold winner. Now this jacket is made of a material I have heard for, from before. It's called Leafa Infinity Pro. Now, I don't exactly know how this fabric compares to the gold standard that I use, which is Gore-Tex Pro. It's probably somewhere um, around the same. But the more interesting thing about this fabric is after contacting the company and they sent me a bit of an information brochure is that the material itself is completely sustainable. Basically, it's eco-friendly. So 
These materials, as you know, used to be uh, made with uh, very um, nature unfriendly stuff. Now we're going away from that. Uh, and uh, they're also using sustainable down, which is very interesting. Also, the whole thing is 20% lighter. Um, and uh, yeah, well, all in all, a really interesting jacket. Good, it has a Rico reflector, which I like to call the bury me or find me reflector. <laughs> But hey, I mean, it's an additional uh, safety device that might save your life if, uh, well, if, uh, if, you, if you have a helicopter with a search unit next to wherever your accident happened. Okay, so that's on short on this, uh, this jacket. Uh, it says that the whole treatment uh, cuts the CO2 emissions almost in half when they're making this thing. It's a perfect mixture of hydrophilic and hydrophobic materials, processed, blah, 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 blah. This is all technical jargon that uh, the usual user will not understand. But what you do need to understand is that Harley Hansen is a world-renowned company that has been making outdoor gear for ages and they supply uh, rescue personnel, uh, oil and drilling services, expeditions in the Antarctic with all kinds of jackets and uh, gear that has time and time again proven to work. So I'm very, very eager to see this thing if I ever find it in a store around here. And looks and I also dig the orange color. I really dig the orange color. It's very nice. So that's for the jacket. Then the next thing I wanted to talk about is skis. And for these skis, I wanted to talk about the Nutcracker 98. The Nutcracker, I think, is a ISPO Gold winner. It is a sustainable ski, or was it? Wait, let's go check it out. Ejector. And the Nutcracker, yeah, the Nutcracker, it's the Nutcracker. Well, uh, the company Early Bird Skis from Hanno Schwab is a relatively new company. From 2014, uh, 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 he started making skis basically in his basement with an old ski press, uh, basically composed only of mostly naturally degrading materials from the uh, lime that is used to to, to, to the wood the coverings all everything had to be sustainable and uh, bringing this to a super eco uh, and bringing this to a uh, round is actually the culmination is their new ski which is the first fully uh, fully fully uh, circular economy based ski which means that you can take it apart when it's used up, it can decompose and go back into nature without causing any kind of harm to anything around it. That's why they had won a ISPO Gold Award this year again with sustainability achievement. And the ski itself is the not uh, is this one, Chica de 90. That was the one, yeah. It's the ISPO Gold winner. Uh, it's a touring ski made for ski mountaineering projects. You know, I like ski mountaineering projects. Uh, if you look at the pictures, it I like these skis because they really have like this old kind of ski look, but they're actually like super high tech. Now you can get the ski in two colors. The pink one, I really like the pink one, is really cool. Uh, it's a game changer, the ski. Carbon neutral, 100% first circular economy ski made by a small company that is not even 10 years old. So congratulations to Hanno for this one, really awesome. And I still want to try one of these skis, but I wasn't looking at that one when we were last time when we talked. I was looking at the Jackdaw. This was more. One more thing with the early bird skis, you have to understand that producing these skis is not as cheap. So for Slovenia, the market for these skis is very limited because we don't spend this kind of money on skis. The early bird skis uh, usually cost around, I think, a thousand bucks. You can, they're custom made, that's another thing. So per order, your ski is made exactly to the options that you want to have. And they cost like 1,200 francs, including tax. So that's like, what, 1,200 bucks, right? So if you buy this ski, you really want to buy some handcrafted, something handcrafted for you, 
made out of uh, re reusable materials being eco-friendly. So this is an upmarket ski. It's not your everyday ski that um, you would uh, buy in your average store at a 30% discount. Okay, so th that's for uh, the skis. And the next thing I wanted to show you as a little intermezzo, I was actually uh, quite intrigued by uh, flitlock little hermetic dry bags <laughs> i don't know if you guys use this but i figured i would really like to get one of these things for uh carrying my phone around when we go bivaking because uh, <laughs> i had one or two die on me because of my extensive use in a bag like this would be probably be cool so uh, if you need something like that f check them out uh, and they can be yours if you buy them of course Okay, so the next thing we wanted to check out, let me scroll down. Uh, don't want to be too long again today because, you know, you, you guys have other things to do and uh, yeah, I just want to show you the highlights. So the next thing I wanted to show you, where is this now? Okay, we have a lot of these. Odin. One exotic thing I noticed when I was surfing today was surfing. And I noticed this little company that makes sustainable skis and they are from Italy and you can guess from which island. Uh, alter egos, alter, alter ego surfboards. Uh, new, relatively new company that makes uh, surfboards out of like super high tech material, like basically cork and the stringer is made around, not in the middle and they use basalt fibers to reinforce the whole thing. So eco-friendly, free stages made close by. So uh, if anybody's interested, check it out. They have a really, really big, uh, re nice little selection of everything from fishes to, 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 to rippers to, to, mini Mali boost like really cool I think I was actually interested on <laughs> either the pole dancer or on the Mustang Mustang sounds nice <laughs> so yeah that's for the surfing part of the weather <laughs> okay let's get back to where we were okay but showrooms okay so another thing I wanted to talk about was uh, materials. So uh, most of you know that I uh, work with Ferino for my expedition kind of stuff. So I have a lot of Ferino jackets and, and uh, middle layers and first layers. And I use their backpacks mostly exclusively for, for everything I do because I love them. Their design is top notch. Uh, they're also usually a year before in terms of adapting new technologies and bringing products to market than the big brands. They're also not a small brand, don't forget it. It's pretty, quite a big brand. They also have uh, other areas where they are active that is not just the outdoor market. Um, but uh, I was checking out PolarTech because I like PolarTech's fabrics. Like uh, I still have a PolarTech, wait, I think I have it here. I still have this <laughs> from the good old days of the outdoor fair. When we went to parties, we were given these jackets. And this was one of the first jackets with the new Polar Tech, I think 100D material. Uh, it's also some kind of uh, Ecoa material that is Echo and damn, I mean, the thing looks like new after hundreds of abuses for, this was 2016, oh, we're getting old. Sheesh. Well, in any case, I checked out this and I'm very interested in this jacket, especially in this version as a mid layer, you know, because I usually like to travel when I go uh, ski touring. I like to take good mid layers and I don't use a jacket unless I use a wind stopper. If it's windy, I usually just use something like this and it has to be really breathable because I uh, sweat a lot. So this jacket I'm going to definitely check out. It's the Farino Roses jacket with the Polar Tech Power Air material. 
It's a encapsulated air, encapsulates air with a series of bubbles in air pockets, so it retains body warmth while reduces microfiber shedding uh, during washing. So it doesn't get like this <laughs> feeling, you know. Yeah. So this thing was interesting. And then, of course, the big thing in Slovenia, you know, we have Elan, which is our uh, big pride, our ski company, local home company now in American ownership. Uh, they started teasing a new product, which was called the Elan Voyager a few days ago. Now, if some of you remember more ski mountaineering from uh, Vlado Kanicar, unfortunately our deceased, but top uh, ski mountaineer, one of the best in the world, wanted to descend the K2 on a special pair of collapsible skis with a um, with a special material uh, with uh, that you could fold together. Now it seems that Elan took this concept of the ski which was originally developed I think for the Canadian military on a grant and a Slovenian development grant uh, and uh, took it further and made a ski out of it. It's called the Elan Voyager and it's supposedly uh, revolutionary in the sense that you could flip it into half and put it in your bag. Now the downside is that it costs as much as Hanos custom made skis and is not exactly eco-sustainable I think so yeah uh, I don't exactly understand what the market is for this from the average consumer but I think that the whole idea is, here is like a upscale market so a really people who have money and one travel on planes where you might not have to want to go to the oversized uh, luggage but if you go or don't the plane leaves at the same time so I don't, I don't understand that completely but apparently this is a cool ski to ski it would uh, be it's a top-notch development of course all the patents and everything I don't like the idea that this was made for military use first and then uh, they decided to well commercialize it and try to sell it and I don't know how many pairs of these skis they are expecting to sell but call me skeptical. I was skeptical at the whole idea. I mean I like the idea that if you would use it for ski mountaineering that the thing doesn't come like you know down here under your backpack so when you're descending or climbing somewhere above you don't get hackled into something but I still don't think that that's a problem that big that would warrant this kind of uh, technological overkill if you want so yeah uh, you can check the launch video if you want it's really nice made it's uh, 15 minutes long they explain the whole concept of the ski they can also sell you a bag for it for 200 bucks so yeah i mean it remains to be seen if uh, you can find the market for this. Look, this is how the whole thing works. Like, this is really like a cool patent. I talked to the last ISPO, I talked to the guy who invented the patent and it's like a really cool idea. You just swivel it around and click it in and it supposedly skis like a normal ski. So, really cool. I think it's... But yeah, I mean... It remains to be seen. They're selling as an all-mountain ski. I don't know if an all-mountain ski with this width is an all-mountain ski for powder. It's probably not, but more for the upscale uh, executive skier, I guess, if you want to. <laughs> okay, so much for the Elan thing. Then another thing I wanted to, to talk to you about today is bindings, AT bindings. Now. As you know, most of the world has moved on from Alpine bindings to AT bindings because everybody is in the touring craze. Everybody is in the touring craze. So, what the companies noticed is that since our future is weird and unpredictable, and most people these days that go for, especially in Austria and in the Alpine area, that go for a week holiday, don't buy skis anymore, they rent them. So the next logical step for rent is to add touring skis to the rent stuff. So what do we do? We make touring rent AK bindings. So technical bindings that can be adjusted front and back like a normal Alpine rental binding for somebody who, for example, is on a holiday and decides that today is a nice day to do a ski tour. So let's do a ski tour. Of course, I still think that this could be a problem because like, you know, 
people who don't know how to move in the alpine terrain, in avalanche danger, just going out, renting a pair of touring skis. Hmm. Also, on the other hand, it might be cool because it might make the whole thing more accessible to people. Like, So it's going to be another balance act, I guess. Well, remain. We will see if uh, this whole thing is accepted or not. But we can check out bindings. Uh, from Italy, and I'm going to specifically go to the best pin bindings there are. I think one of the best pin bindings there are, the ATKs. Uh, you know, uh, Elan also uses this in their rebranding, their ATK bindings, like Dynafit bindings or Ion bindings are probably one of probably the better ones among these. Uh, and when you go through the product showroom, I noticed that there are two new bindings here, which is called the ATK Easy Rent 10 and the ATK Rent Me. So the and the front 12 rental. So these are specifically meant for rental shops. Uh, they are adjustable front and back. They weigh only 300 grams, so they are very light. And uh, they are adjustable here front and back. Uh, some, of, some of them are front and back, and some of them are just back. So the ATK Ren 10 is just back, which you can remove heel for 50 millimeters. And the Rent Me, I think, is the one that can be moved front and back. Yeah, so for 80 millimeters, you can also recenter the ski depending on the sole length uh, and uh, the, the position of the skier so it's always kind of right right so because if it's just the back and somebody comes with a 29 foot you just extend it all the way to the back and he's like maybe two centimeters or a centimeter off center point mount which could make things hard for somebody who is not exactly a good skier but definitely an interesting trend to follow i myself would probably since I change boots every season or two, would probably consider a backplate, which something that you can already get for dinner fit bindings, for example, a slide plate, or for the uh, Salomon Mountain Lab, you can also get a slide plate for the back, so you can adjust it for the few millimeters that the new boot might be different, or if you use two different boots, so you can quickly readjust it. Okay, so... Not being too long, one more thing. I'm going. So this is for the for the for the for the quick ISPO part for today. So we talked about skis. So we talked about ISPO gold winners. So the early bird skis. Go check them out. Uh, Earlybirdskis.com. Uh, check out the skis if you want to have a custom ski that is great. Go to Hanus page and order one. Uh, if you are interested in uh, supreme performance outdoor garments, you can get the Helly Hansen jacket uh, in the super cool orange color. Uh, if you want to go rent touring, get uh, next season when you're going to go into your rental shop, you're probably going to see a pair of these ATK bindings on a lot of the skis. And uh, before we go, one more thing I said we're going to talk about boots. So it's time for boots so boots you know that a few years ago when we all started doing the ski touring thing it was one thing we all had alpine boots which were not very flexible in the back so what became a trend was to go lighter and make them more like touring boots. You know, you have Scarpa, La Sportiva and all these brands that make specific boots that are just for ski touring. They're ultra light, uh, they're good on the uphill, but they're not that great on the downhill. Of course, a lot of things have changed in all this time. And back then, one of the top uh, crossover products was definitely, and the breakthrough was for me, was definitely the South Thelma Mountain Lab. I used this boot for three to two or three seasons without a break. Still works, but there was a few problems. I had just two buckles and a power strap. The power transmission, hmm, it was relatively soft. So if you had big skis, I'm not talking about the uh, old mountain explorer. I'm talking about ooh, the power monster, this here, the, the big one. So, uh, for running those skis, these boots were a little too soft. 
It was also a bit of a quiver with the locking mechanism, which was really annoying. And one more thing was that they were not very su super comfortable. So if I did a bivouacking thing for three days, after three days when I was driving back, my feet were killing me when I was in the car back. So I, I, I remember driving barefoot a few times. But this boot worked, so I still have it. It's my backup boot now. Um, if I decide that I go, want to go a little lighter, I still use it here and there. But then I changed to the Lange Free Tour, which was more of a classic Alpine boot with a touring function. You know, like the old Salomon Cresti, only better for riding. Because I still think that Lange makes the best riding boots. Last year at ISPO, Lange then presented this. This is the XT3 from Lange. This is the 130 version with the V-Log 3 system and all the marketing, blah, 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 blah. But in short, what is this boot? This is Lange's uh, long-awaited and somewhat late answer to the Mountain Lab and all the other crossover boots. What's the good thing? Well, the good thing is that this skis like a proper Alpine boot. It's super comfortable, easy to get in. The, ice, the mechanism is so well made that it doesn't lock in. So basically you just flip the switch, it locks in, click. You flip it out, it locks out. Regardless of whether there's ice in here or anything like that, it won't fuck up. Which is something that I learned to love because honestly, the last thing you want on somewhat of a sunny day with minus five degrees when the snow gets iced up and then it doesn't again and then it's iced up and then it gets inside, and then you can't lock your boot and you are on top of some uh, super steep chute you have to ride down with an open boot trust me <laughs> with these it happened a few times but not too many so i'm very happy with this one and if you are looking for something of a more of a crossover option that you can also use for your alpine skiing i would definitely go for this boot uh, the colors are awesome you can get them in men's women's they're the flex, flexes go from, I think, uh, 80 to 140, and uh, the inner liner is thermoformable, and it is very, very comfortable. One thing they also changed is the full material at the front, which doesn't get, the plastic doesn't have to get as eaten up as it does on the Salomons, uh, from all your uh, failed tries to get into your pin bindings, and... Uh, uh, they are also really, really cool. Okay, so before we go, let's check out if we have any questions on our Discord. Crampons and ski shoes probably meaning ski boots, right? So, yes, you can use crampons on ski boots. <laughs> Ironically, I already had one of these installed because that was one of the quivers I had with this boot and these uh, crampons. I use very classical Grivel crampons with the, I think it's the 14, uh, 14 cramps. I know they're not, they're not light, but they do work and they don't fuss, so they just basically work full tech, you know. And I had problems putting them on jeans sometimes. Now with, uh, with the XT3s. They fit any kind of full automatic crampons. You can use them at your will when you climb your super steep chutes. The arch stays nice so it doesn't bend in too much because that's also a problem that I've noticed with the uh, uh, other boots that sometimes these would not, if you don't fasten it properly, like really strongly, it would start shivering out when there was too much pressure coming somewhere from the middle. And yeah work with crampons so you can put your crampons on the boot without any problem just don't put it on the boot when you put your pins in okay so with that i think uh for today we covered a lot of things if you have any questions just pm me on instagram or or write it down on the discord channel like uh, add questions on the discord channel for tomorrow let's check out uh, unlike yesterday, I am a little prepared today, so for tomorrow's we will be checking a mountain Dale gear, which have like uh, a lot of uh, stuff, and Tebek has a new modular helmet, um, and there's some cool climbing skins, and more skis. So, until tomorrow, have a nice one, and uh, enjoy the ISPO, and stay safe out there. Bye!